What's up, Rogue Nation? My name is Cody Buffington, and I explore secrets around the world. Today, we're going to be discovering ancient tombs in the Valley of the Kings. So stick around to the end where I'll give my honest opinion if it's worth visiting. So we've come out very early this morning where you can see the hot air balloons right behind me. We're at Abu Nega, which is actually a place that was discovered very recently. And this is where we're going to be starting the day. So we have now made it to the Valley of the Kings. It's just about 7 a.m. here. And uh, we, I kind of want to go over the cost of getting in here. It costs 300 Egyptian pounds just for the photo video, 240 in order to go into three of the nine tombs that are available here. And if you want to see the others, you have to pay an additional 240 for each in, uh, group of three tombs. And then Tutankhamun is not included as well. That's an additional 300 if you want to do that. So. As you can imagine, I spent a good bit of money this morning just to get here. We paid for a tour guide for the day. Turns out he's not a tour guide, he's just a driver. So we had to get an additional tour guide. So that was an additional uh, like 300. So when you're coming here, just be prepared to be spending a lot of money. But I really want to see King Tut. I really want to see the Valley of the Kings. We came here very early so we could see all of it. So let's head on in. So our guide asked us which tombs we wanted to go to, and he said you can go to the three smaller ones or we can go to three big ones. So we wanted to go to three big ones since we're gonna be going to King Tut's later, which is a really small one. So here we at, we're at the tomb of Metampita, who is a ruler who is, he's actually the 14th son of Ramses II, one of the famous rulers, and Ramses II had 210 kids. He had 97 sons and 113 daughters, which is Metampita. He built this tomb, and it's one of the biggest ones here in the King's Valley. Right now, we are in the tomb of Metempita. So Metempita, the 14th son, was the ruler that first came after Ramses II, and he only ruled for 10 years, but during that 10 years, he built one of the biggest tombs here for himself, as you can see. <laughs> So now we are finally at King Tut's tomb. This is the famous tomb. And this one was found in 1922. Originally, they started looking for it in 1906. So they're actually trying to look for it. And it took them that many years to find it. Here you can see King Tut himself. This is his mummy. I'm not sure if he was just very short at the time or people were smaller, but it seems like he's only about four feet tall. It's crazy that you can actually see him here in his tomb out in the Valley of the Kings. So King Tut's tomb is actually one of the smallest ones they ever found. It's also one of the last ones that they ever found here. And uh, what's crazy about it is it's so famous because they found so much treasure here. They found it untouched essentially. No other tomb had ever had this amount of treasure and goods in it. So here in King Tut's tomb, this was one of the last ones they found a long time ago. This is actually number 62 out of 64 that they currently have. You can see over here these monkeys. These are for each hour of the night. And so when he dies, these are supposed to be the 12 hours of the night. And so through the night, he takes a boat through the underworld. And by the end, he should come up as a sun god. So when the sun raises again, that's the king being a god after he has died. And then over here, you can also see that unlike every other tomb, this one has all these black spots, which are like mold. And the reason it's like this is because he died so quickly. And so they actually didn't have enough time to build his tomb. So they actually had to rush and do it. You can only have 70 days when, you're mon uh, when you die to become uh, mummified and then buried. And so they had to put this whole thing together in about a week. So that's why it's a lot smaller and a lot less intricate paintings than everyone else's. Also, they closed off the tomb when the paint was still drying. So that like, difference in the, uh, in the temperature of the paint and the temperature around here is why there's mold in here and not mold in anyone else. What's even crazier is that he has the smallest tomb, but he also had the most amount of gold and treasure in this tomb. And as we saw in the uh, back in the Cairo Museum, there was a giant gold case that he was in. And so to get that into this small little chamber, they must, it's like they had to build this chamber around it. And what's interesting is there's so many different theories as to how King Tut died because he became a pharaoh at age nine and then he died at around 18 or 19. So he only ruled for 10 years. But even during those years, he was a kid. So he had a lot of people kind of overlooking him. He had a lot of uh, people giving him advice. So a lot of people think that he died of uh, being inbred and having all these diseases and he was kind of crippled. And so some people think he died from bleeding out from an injury. Other people think he died from uh, malaria, getting a mosquito bite. 
But other people suggest that he was actually killed because when Howard Carter found him, this is actually Howard Carter's theory, he had a giant, uh, like a giant break in his head in his skull, like he was, uh, you know, murdered. And they think that his, uh, the high priest had the most to gain from this. And so the high priest who was giving him advice, he had the most to gain, so he might have killed him because later he then married King Tut's wife. And then King Tut's wife was kind of scared. She was looking out for outside uh, help, so she asked someone, she sent a messenger to go find a prince from another area. So the three messengers were killed and their heads were offered up to the queen as a wedding gift from the high priest. Now imagine a, probably an 18 year old girl getting married to some high priest who's probably in their 60s or 70s. There was a there was a 46 year age difference, so that kind of sucks. Also, the tomb was robbed supposedly three times, but the high priest apparently stopped the robbers multiple times and then covered everything up and put it back in the tomb. And one of the reasons it took so long to find this tomb is because it was covered in rubble from other tombs around us. So when all those ones were getting robbed, and stuff, all the rubble fell and it was blocking the entrance here. So that's why King Tut's tomb took the longest to find. So we're actually in the tomb of Ramses the fourth right now. He was not one of the famous Ramses. There's actually 11 of them buried here in this tomb. And this one's just kind of really famous because it's very vibrant. The colors here are unlike any other tomb. You can see a lot of the blues above. Everything just stayed very vibrant. So we've now made it to Hatshepsut's temple. She was the queen of Egypt and she ruled for the longest time and had a temple built here. And they actually planted trees here, which are incense trees, which came from the kingdom of Punt, which is this mythical kingdom. Supposedly it's Somalia now, but they had incense trees all along here. And I guess they were her favorite trees leading up to her grand temple, which we're heading up to right now. So this sanctuary behind me is Queen Hatshepsut's sanctuary that no one could go in back in ancient Egypt. So no one saw what was in here other than probably the people who built it. Now you can go in there and we can see what's inside, but it's interesting because at the time, no one else was allowed in there but herself. All right, you guys, so I'm back now from the Valley of the Kings and I wanted to give you my honest opinion because this is a place that I have been looking forward to for a very long time, especially doing research. You know, this is where the kings were found, all these tombs, they even found King Tut's tomb with a ton of treasure here. So it was a place that I was looking forward to for a very long time, but throughout the day, it didn't seem like it was, you know, going to meet my expectations. And I don't want to complain, I just want to list a couple of points that you might want to take into consideration when going here uh, to maybe help your experience. So when I went there, it was by myself or with my friends. We were on like some official tour. We had hired a driver and uh, it turns out the driver who was supposed to be our guide turned out to not be our guide, just a driver. So we paid him a large sum of money to just drive us and then we had to get a guide once we were there. Now one thing to keep in mind is that local guides apparently are not allowed to go in with you to these tombs. So you pay this guide all this money and then he stands outside, uh, which is kind of a kind of a downer. <laughs> and then other things such as you get hassled a lot. Thanks. No. And then every time you take a picture uh, of something in there, the guys kind of just walk up to you. There's like little security guys. They just walk up to you and they kind of like low key are asking for tips. Like it's like some like shady kind of business. They're just always asking everyone for tips. And that kind of got annoying after we go into a couple tombs and everywhere we go, someone's asking you for money. Uh, so just things like that to be wary of, you know, maybe if you do go bring some small bills. I only had 200, which is like a large amount and they're looking for like five, 10, 20. And so like I didn't have these you know, $20, $20 little uh, Egyptian uh, pounds to give out. So I just wanted to kind of keep that in, I just want to kind of give that to you so you can keep that in mind if you are coming to the Valley of the Kings. But other than those couple points, it is something that is so cool to see in real life, seeing these tombs and seeing like where pharaohs are buried. So if you go, I highly recommend taking some kind of tour because you'll be hassled a lot less and you won't have to deal with all these little issues. Uh, but yeah, that is it for today, Rogue Nation. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, explore the world. It's just sadness. It's just crazy. Let's get out of here. No. No. No.